Hi family, I hope you're good. I hope you're blessed. I thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Um, <laughs> I've been in deep prayers about because it's sometimes we get overwhelmed, so we need to to rest. Uh, our topic on the water spirits is not ended yet. And we will talk more on it on the other video that will come. But today is the beginning of another video that talks more about the wizard, the witches behind pulpits, you see. And we must also remember family. I am talking genuinely from my own experience and... I'm not describing anybody according to anybody's own opinion or view or a book read somewhere or whatever the case may be. Um, my journey from darkness to light uh, also enabled me to see people that I was walking with pretending to be angels of light. And before I even go furthermore to that, I want us to read something from the book of Matthew chapter 23. Uh, Jesus calling out the Pharisees, hypocritical uh, people, you know. And this is the, the verse and other verses that we'll refer to that I want us to walk with as individuals who are in Christ, you know. I'm not standing here saying, uh, this is not a church. This is a channel, okay? A personal channel for somebody who decided to tell her story to whoever cares to listen. And because I'm talking about Jesus as a born-again Christian, uh, in my story and talking about Sangomas, no Sangoma is entitled to come to the channel and start uh, wanting to practice Sangoma within the channel. So is with Christians. Yes, you may comment, but do not feel like you have a certain entitlement because I say I'm a born again Christian. Me being a born again Christian, it's a personal relationship with my Jesus. And I will have people that I believe will do things out of love and genuinity who will maybe teach me where they feel like I need lessons and everything. There's my number. You know, there's my number. If you are genuinely doing something out of love, I believe you are going to take my number as a brother or as a sister in Christ, right? But you must remember this is a channel. This is not your church. This is not your your home cell. It's a channel of an individual who decided to tell her story. Okay. We must not be confused. It's not a channel that is Sangoma come dance in the channel. Christian come dance in the channel uh, the way you like. Someone is telling her story. Always remember that. It is important to remember that. This is someone's story. She's narrating it. How you view it, it's totally up to you. My mission is to let people know that if I were people, I would choose this Jesus the world wants not to exist, but exist. Anyway, we continue with our channel. Matthew chapter 23. Jesus criticizes the religious leaders. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. Jesus is not talking about people that went doing nothing. Jesus is talking about the scholars of that time. People who know the word. People who know the law of Moses. Jesus is talking about the religious leaders here. So practice and obey what, whatever they tell you, but don't follow their examples. Jesus is saying, 
Take whatever they tell you, but don't practice. They don't, don't follow their examples. It means they are, they are, they are preachers of the word, but they are not doers of the word. That is what Jesus is saying here. Because Jesus says, so practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their examples. It means whatever was coming out of them was good, but the action onwards was not good. So Jesus is reminding us of the book of James. Don't be a preacher of the word and not a doer of the word. If you are like that, you are simply like a man who looks himself in the mirror and quickly forgets after walking away how they look like. So Jesus here is saying, follow what they say to you, what they tell you, but don't follow their actions. Don't follow their example. And then for they don't practice what they teach. They only say it, but they don't practice it. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. They are the outward, um, you know, those ones that outwardly they're righteous, but in their hearts, they're not what they say they are. You see, outwardly, they're perfect. You know, they used to wear robes. They, they were perfect outwardly. But inside, they were far from righteousness. And Jesus said, They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Take up my yoke. You know, Jesus, come to me, all you who are heavy loaded, all you who are heavy, you, you are weary. Come to him. Take, take up his yoke. He is the one that eases the burden. But the self-righteous, the hypocrites, all they knew was to crush people. But they never knew how to ease the people's burdens. Jesus is saying, hear what they say. Don't follow their examples. This is what they know. They only know how to break people. They don't know how to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra white prayer boxes. With scripture verses inside. And they wear robes with extra long tassels. And they love to sit at the head table at banquets. And in the seat of honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Father, we thank you for your word. Jesus describes these people that I'm talking about today in part one of the witches and the wizards. Excuse me. An overseer, any leader that is chosen according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, anybody with the gift given unto that person for the purpose of glorifying God and edifying the church has nothing to do with self-honor but the honor of God. These people, witches and wizards behind the pulpit, are more for self, are more for show-offs. They are never satisfied with the respect they get from only their own congregations. They also do it for the show-off even outside. You see, 
a, a witch and a wizard behind the pulpit is someone who has modernized the African traditional healers that we know out there. And this person is doing it behind the pulpit. I call them modernized witches. Why do I call them modernized witches? You see, when you go to a Sangoma's place, the good thing about a Sangoma is the good uh, Sangoma knows that he's a Sangoma. He's not hiding behind anything. They practice what they practice openly as Sangomas with their regalia and alice. But with these pastors that use gift a gift, you know, of God and use it for their own selfish motives, you know, um, and they will see, okay, I can preach, I can do this, I can do that. Then they will start acting that out as a, as a Sangoma. That is why I say one-on-one, -on -one I understand, but some one-on-ones are coming straight from hell. Because this person will copy the ways of, 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 of Sangomas and bring it to church. And these people tend to be so religious. You know, they tend to be so boastful. Everything is about them. It is not about the message they are preaching. It is no longer. The Bible says, how will they hear if no one preaches to them? And what are we preaching? The Bible also says in the book of Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing the message, which is Christ. The message is Jesus. So these boastful part ones, the level ones, how they start, they turn everything and make it about them. They are too religious. They are hot. You see, their heart is not consecrated. It's all about outwardness. It's all about see me, I'm doing this. The suit I wear, my church is well dressed. It's all about see these. But inside, that's not who they are. They are all pleasing in the sight of I. You know, what they say, you would think that, my God, that man is anointed, that woman is anointed, but that is a wolf in a sheepskin. Jesus says, listen and take what they are saying, but do not follow their example. You know, in as much as it's painful to come and call people's names. But I think it is that time where I tell you, I, I don't want to bring people's names here. And then I, I, I have to battle with people for their names. But it's also good to set examples. In South Africa, outside, outside South Africa, all over where there are wizards all portraying themselves as men of God, women of God, but they are witches behind the pulpit. They are people, if it weren't for this Jesus, you know, they're scared of him, but they're not scared of him. You see, they, 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 they don't want to fight with him at the end because they know their day of judgment is coming. So they're going to act Jesus outside, but inside they are fighting with themselves. So there are pastors out there that we all know that they are not who they say they are. How do we see that? And I want to correct this narrative of people thinking that it's only in Africa. No. Thinking that it's only a certain race that is full of falsehood. That is full of these witches and wizards behind the pulpit. It is not so. Uh, in South Africa, okay, if we were to talk about it, the witches behind the pulpits are there for the eyes to see. You see, people just don't want to accept 
that this is what has oh you know this are the outcomes of a person i looked up to this is the outcome of a pastor i called my father but the truth of the matter is how you the bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge how do you digest a rape case how do you digest a case of sexual abuse that comes against a man of God. First case, second case, that case. How do you digest all that as a congregant and come to say they are lying? The first one, the second one, the third. How do people lie? So many people lie against a person. First, a wizard behind the pulpit. What is a man of God who's married doing with another woman end up seeing the nakedness? Let's say the sexual uh, uh, violating of people didn't occur, right? What was this man doing with another woman who is not his wife naked? One. Two, what is it that drives this man to keep being naked for other women besides his wife? What is driving him? What is the driving force of this man to keep doing it? Okay. These are wizards behind the pulpit. Adulterers. The Bible won't. They shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators. The Bible won't. Idolaters. The Bible won't. They, they turn themselves into idols in their own churches. They are called fathers. So much that this fatherhood... The Bible says, <laughs> wait though, we have to quote it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says they love to be to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplace and to be called rabbi. They want recognition. These wizards, when they are starting out. This wizard, they move from rank to rank. You see, there is that thing of confusion in ranks. You see, uh, there are people who don't know. Uh, I'm called as an evangelist, but I'm ordained as a pastor. But that's not the calling of God upon me. I am, I am called as a prophetess. And everything that God does brings no confusion there has to be an elder that will confirm that you know scripture will confirm that and your life will demonstrate the gift of god in you so what happens with these pastors is they like recognition they start well especially the prophetic ministry a lot of wizards and witches behind the pulpit are behind prophetic ministry here is how they do it. A sangoma, like I said, is proudly a sangoma. Or a confused sangoma, a person who's stolen for the kingdom of darkness, not knowing the gift they have in them and how to use it for the kingdom of light. You see, because the giver of gifts is God, not the devil. So these people, these wizards in the prophetic ministry they will start loving prophecy 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 you know the person can have one two prophecies and they nail it it's it's correct and then as time goes by because of the attention now you get it because you prophesied one two and it was correct you know and then 
they will start going out looking for things that will make them see in people's lives. You see, with Sangomahood, I don't know if you've noticed, there is Ishoba, I don't know what you call it, that, that thing for, you know, that, uh, ho I can say a cow, uh, a cow tail that you see a lot of Sangomas use. You see those, those uh, tails that you see them, between the tail and the hood, they roll it under there. There's muti. There is a spiritual mood. There's muti that will connect them to their spirituality in order for them to smell things, in order for them to see things. So don't see them holding it like that and you think it's empty. No, there is muti to, to, to enable them to see things spiritually. You see? So Sangomas have a lot of things they do in order for them to have spiritual inside of certain things so prophets um these false prophets that go they will start going to native doctors in order for them now to have spiritual enlightenment to have spiritual eyesight to see in people's uh, areas after going to the sangoma for them to have to see people's things they they as time goes by, whatever they have expires and they go to another one. And then he finds himself entangled with some goma stuff, uh, dark forces in order for him to operate in this rank of prophecy. You see, now that is the beginning of his own troubles. Then he ends up joining cults. He ends up joining brotherhoods that are not easy to leave. And they have high maintenance in order for them to become what they are this is the bible full prophecy book you know john tells us in revelation about people believing what is written here. you see the bible is a is an inerrant uh, this is a book without errors it is infallible it is final from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is enough. So these prophets are prophets that will want to add their own knowledge. You see, speak things that God did not speak. And then when they get confused by their own prophecies, it hits hard. Now they start going and doing things that are not in the word of God. You see, when they see that they've cornered themselves, they start drinking, they start eating drugs. A lot of them do that. They start sleeping around because they have to maintain certain idols they go out to fetch. They are showing shortly prophets. These are wizards and witches behind the pulpit. It's not only men. It's not only Africans. It's not only Africa. They are all over. They would rather sell their souls to maintain their ranks, to maintain their status, to maintain their prophecies in order for them to keep the money flowing in and compromise their stand with Jesus. They are outward wolves. They are all about outward religion. They are all about to see me, I'm doing it properly. They are all about to see how I move. But their spiritual realm, the true sense of the Holy Spirit at work is dead. Because their hearts is not consecrated. Their hearts is not for Jesus. Their hearts is all about them. This is just the beginning of witches and wizards you know these witches and wizards are people that have a certain background of of closeness to african belief systems you know uh, atheism there are a lot you see these prophets this false for a heart to just denounce god that's why salvation is a personal thing
So a person alone doesn't believe in God, but believes he can use his, his, his gift to speak, his gift to do what? To come confuse children of God. But the Bible has warned us. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. We're not going to blame the false prophets. We are going to blame those who do not saturate themselves with the word of God. You are going to be blamed yourself, held accountable for not heeding to the warning of the word of God. You see? They are bringing Sangoma wood ways of doing things to the church. They have funny tongues. They have funny one-on-ones. They have funny cloth. You know, yeah, pa pastors and these apostles, these preachers, this whatever. An apostle. <laughs> but never planted a church. An apostle goes out planting churches. This apostle has never. Apostle, even his own um, ministry uh, sons and daughters, not sending them out, keeping them here for all himself, not for the extension of the kingdom. They are self-righteous. They are there you know one pastor i met in one of my journeys to get powers was one humble pastor all this pastor was saying was i want money i want a car i want this you know, I want to buy a house. I want to build my church. I want new instruments. It was all about money. This pastor was telling me, you know, there's this young man who started a church like way, way, way just now. New, new church. I started way, way backwards. But his church is just big. It was never about Jesus. These pastors are about Jesus outside. They are never really about Jesus inside. These prophets, what makes you as a child of God, following this particular person, not question why would a pastor, why would a bishop have a se sexual uh, abuse, sexual uh, assaults against him that are multiple wizards behind the pulpit? Why would this woman of God have lesbianism behind them? Witches behind the pulpit. Doing exactly what God is saying I cannot allow in my kingdom. Adultery and fornication. They are doing it. Why? Because they know their father already. The father of all liars. They come out, lie, behind closed doors, do the works of their fathers. They consult for power. They consult in order to see. Why do they go to Sangomas? They know a Sangoma comes. You come to a Sangoma. A Sangoma is not like a daughter. A Sangoma is not going to say, give me the symptoms. A Sangoma will hit the bones and tell you. So they want to practice that of Sangoma in behind the pulpit. Sometimes they don't open the, the Bible. That's how we see you are a fake. This is about Jesus from beginning to end. In the beginning, God created by word, right? By word. He created. Let us create men. Who is he talking with? 
Jesus. It means Jesus was there before everything was. Right? So, this from Genesis to Revelation, Jesus in, is in existence. So, if you, if the Bible says Jesus is the head of the church and you open scripture, he, you, you, you read scripture and then after that, your, your prophecies come before him being the beginning and the end of your sermon. That's how we see who you are. Jesus should be the center of every sermon. He is not the center of a sermon. Stand up and leave. If you want a motivational speaker, you will listen to a motivational speaker. If you want a sermon, you will go listen to your pastor preaching a sermon. And if your pastor is a word preaching man, and today uh, in church he is motivating you, he will motivate you around Jesus. You see, witches behind the pulpit, they think the Holy Spirit is a sedative pill. You know, they can blah, 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 without considering his teachings, without considering what he's saying. So these wizards, how do we see them? Let us stay tuned and unravel the mysteries of these false people. We are not talking about criminals behind pulpits. We are talking about witches and wizards behind pulpit. Stay blessed. I love you. God love you all.